is at the end of yesterday's le lesson, I uh, left you with this problem. Uh, a proton and an antiproton collide. Each has a kinetic energy of 10 mega electron volts. How much energy do the resulting photons have? So what we talked about yesterday was we talked about how when matter, proton, meets antimatter, an antiproton, when the two of them meet, they annihilate. And what they do is when they annihilate is they both convert all their mass into pure energy in the form of two gamma rays or two gamma photons. Sorry, they're not gamma rays. Gamma is just a symbol we use, so two photons. Uh, a couple of things need to be um, conserved in this. So obviously the energy slash mass, that needs to be conserved. So basically energy in equals energy out. Charge needs to be conserved and momentum needs to be conserved. And that's why we have the two photons going in two opposite directions. So let's look at this problem first. Um, we have a proton and an antiproton, and they each have a kinetic energy of 10 mega electron volts. So that means the total kinetic energy or the total energy in would be 20 mega electron volts. When they collide, they annihilate and two photons are formed. How much energy do resulting photons have? So first of all, we need to find out how much is the total energy in. So first of all, I'm going to convert that 20 mega electron volts into joules. And how we do that, on page 46 of your tables, 47 of your tables, it tells you that one electron volt is equal to, hang on, I lost it. Uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So 20 mega electron volts, to convert that to joules, we simply multiply it by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And when we do that, we get an answer of... We get an answer of 3.204 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. So now we have the amount of energy they both have in joules, but we need to figure out how much energy is created when these two protons, or proton and antiproton, annihilate. So how we do that is we do E equals mc squared. So the mass of a proton is on page 46 of your table. That's 1.672 times 10 to the minus 27. Multiply by c squared, I won't write it in just for space. And because there's two of them, we can multiply this by two. And when you do that, you get an answer of 3.0096 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. So this is our total energy in, the energy of the two protons plus the 20 mega electron volts. So it will be 3.0096 times 10 to the minus 10, that's the energy for the proton and antiproton, plus the kinetic energy they had, which is 3.204 times 10 to the minus 12. And that's that energy there. Add the two of them together, and we get total amount of energy in is 3.04164 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. And that will be the energy that the two photons have. So that's the answer to your question, I think. How much energy do the resulting photons have? Well, this is how much energy they have. If you wanted to figure out how much energy they have each, you could say, well, they divide this by two, and you could say each photon has, divide that by two, 1.52 times 10 to the minus 10 joules of energy. And that's the answer. So it's always the same kind of procedure for this. It's using E equals mc squared to find the energy in. You might have to add the kinetic energy to it as well, and probably they'll make you convert that from electron volts to joules. So today then we're looking at pair production. Now pair production is the opposite of annihilation. And basically, annihilation, we have a proton, or it doesn't have to be a proton, it could be an electron, and it's antiparticle meet and they annihilate and they form photons. Pair production is the exact opposite. Pair production is where a photon, oh, we can't see the photon, where a photon 
moving through the air and randomly there's no kind of way to predict when it will happen this just happens across the universe that photon converts from energy into mass and it might form an electron and an anti-electron or positron the two electrons will move off in different directions to conserve momentum but uh, this is what happens so obviously the amount of energy the photon has depends on the size of the particles that it needs to produce or the particles are limited by the, the size of the particles or the mass of the particles are limited by how big the photon of energy is so in this again everything has to be conserved energy and mass charge needs to be conserved what's the charge of a photon it's zero we have a negative electron and a positron so the overall charge out is zero as well so charge is conserved and momentum needs to be conserved and that's why we have two particles produced and that's why they move off in different directions oh there's the photon appearing now all right that was supposed to happen so it's exactly the opposite of annihilation and the questions are very very similar so let's have a look at the question Calculate the minimum frequency photon that can cause pair production of two particles equivalent to the mass of a proton and an antiproton, each with a velocity of 2.8 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second after production. So this time, the energy in is coming from a photon. So we have the energy of the photon, and that energy is being used to create a proton and an antiproton. And they both have a velocity of this, so they have a kinetic energy as well. Sorry, I don't know how to get rid of the lines, as I said, but hopefully you can, you can follow it. So first of all, let's figure out, we want to figure out, well, what's the total amount of energy that needs to go in? Well, we can do that by figuring out how much energy do you need for a proton and an antiproton. So this is the reverse of what we just did. The energy we need would be equal to E equals mc squared. We have two of them, so it's two times the mass of a proton. So that's going to be two times mass of a proton is 1.67. Technically, you should use all the decimal places they give you in on page 46 of your tables by 10 to the power of minus 27 times c squared. And the amount of energy required to make the two protons is going to be... 3.0113964 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. But the photon doesn't just need energy to make these two protons, or the proton and the antiproton. It also needs energy to give them this amount of kinetic energy. So how much kinetic energy will they need? Well, kinetic energy is a half mv squared. There's two of them though again, isn't there? So we have to multiply this by two, which would mean two multiplied by the half mv squared. Two times a half is just one, so it's mv squared basically. So mv squared will be uh, 1.67299, the mass of proton, times 10 to the power of minus 27, times the velocity 2.8 times 10 to the power of 8 squared. Type that into your calculator and you should get 6.5581521 times 10 to the power of minus 11. So the total energy required will be this number plus this number. So we add the two of them together and I'm running out of space so I'll just add the two of them together and you get an answer of you get an answer of 4.323 times 10 to the power minus 10 joules. And that's the energy that's required. Now what you could do is you could actually find the frequency because photons, the energy of a photon equation is E equals to HF. So the energy that's required is equal to this and that's equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. So therefore finally the frequency equals this number divided by Planck's constant. And I've run out of room, so I won't do it, but you should get an answer of 6.55 times 10 to the 23 hertz. Planck's constant, remember again, it's going to be on page 47 of your tables. And it's equal to 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of minus 34. 
that's h so that's a constant that we always use okay uh, what i'd like you to try now is uh, i'd like you to try the following question and i'm not going to do, do the solutions today but i want you to check the solutions are on page 375 of your textbook and your work today basically is to study pages 372 to 375 and make notes. Now you've already kind of gone through some of it yesterday or you should have done and then try that example and look at the solutions on page 375. Any questions as always, just ask.